welcome to the channel if you're new or if you're not. I'm Alicia and I am stoked you're here either way because it is the new year and a lot of people are setting new health goals and a lot has happened for me over the last year. I wanted to take this first video of the year to just talk about how I prioritize health and it looks very different today than it did a few years ago because I have changed a lot and my relationship with food has really changed a lot. I like to think that a lot of the work I've done has healed my relationship with food. Now that doesn't mean that being healthy is never hard or that I never have cravings or that I never want to eat cake or that I never do eat cake. I do, but it does mean that I just don't stress about all of it so much. I mean, truly so much of why being healthy was hard for me for the last decade really was because of the stress I put myself under trying to do everything right or to do everything at once, right? To get down all the routines and check all the boxes, you know, eat enough vegetables or don't eat sugar or no gluten or grains or legumes or dairy or more fat and less carbs or, you know, more water and sleep or whatever it was, it felt overwhelming. And no matter what I did, I got the message that I was doing it wrong or I wasn't doing it enough um, or I wasn't enough. Eventually I hit a wall that really just made me say, screw it. And that was the best thing that could have happened to me. So last year I actually did a mini series in January about how I healed my relationship with food because it has been happening over the last few years. And now I've had a whole other year to practice being in that new relationship. And I have to say last year was one of the hardest years of my life personally, um, both mentally and emotionally. And what's amazing is that even with all this personal stuff I was going through, I didn't lean on food compulsively. And I just think even though these kinds of videos might be frustrating for some of you because they don't give a quick fix solution that most people are on YouTube searching for this time of year, um, they do give an honest account. And I think that's important because the quick fixes don't actually work. Healing is the long haul. I dieted for 10 years and it only dug me deeper into a hole, into, you know, yo-yo dieting and then binge eating and then restricting and these nasty cycles. And even more importantly, it was compromising my mental health and crawling out of that hole is not possible by just doing another diet or starting another program. You know, it's just not because what I found for me is it wasn't really about the food. You know, there are emotional and mental components and the mind and body are connected in really complex ways. When I realized that having a healthy relationship with food meant looking at how I related to food, right? Everything changed. I related to food with so much judgment and stress and guilt. If I was eating something healthy, I resisted and resented it. And if I was eating something unhealthy, I was judging not just the food, but myself. And I wasn't being present and eventually I was binging it. So rather than continuing to seek out band-aids, I decided once and for all, I needed to get to the root of how I was relating to food. So that meant noticing my judgment my black and white thinking, all of my rules about food and really questioning them. You know, who made these rules? Why am I following them? And what I realized is almost everything I was doing was externally based. Someone else said so. It was an expert or a doctor or a nutritionist or even science. But I realized that no one can know my body and my needs and my direct experience other than me. Even if I gave a nutritionist or a coach all of my stats and a food log and everything I could put on paper, and I did. I did this multiple times for years and I never achieved the results that I wanted. Even when I tracked everything to a T because the truth is I didn't actually know what I wanted and my body was really confused. You know, what I really wanted wasn't a number on the scale because no number was ever enough. I, what I wanted was to be accepted, you know, by society. But the truth is I didn't accept myself. So there was no way to win. You know, society won't ever accept me if I don't. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you I love myself fully and you know, today life is, is rainbows and unicorns. No, like I said, in many ways last year really sucked. But what I will say is letting go of trying to heal my body with other people's experience 
I realized the only one who could heal my body was me. And that meant I had to actually get to know myself, both my body and my mind. I had to get to know my body's needs and the way that it worked and functioned. And that's very different than anybody else. My body is gonna function and work different than yours. But I also had to learn what it meant to listen to my body. I didn't know what that meant or how to do it. I didn't know when I was hungry or full and frankly, <laughs> It didn't matter. You know, I wanted to eat all the time, no matter what, all I thought about was food. So this work of healing my relationship with food was really about healing my relationship with myself and learning to connect with what I call my inner wisdom rather than depending on other people's ideas or outer wisdom. And I have a video about inner and outer wisdom if you wanna learn more about that framework. But this is scary because we find it's not really about food. It's really the work of life and growing into my most authentic self. So I'm not here to rain on your New Year's health goals parade or anything. Really, my goal is to offer a different kind of support than you're probably getting elsewhere. You know, I don't want to sell you a diet. I want to remind you that you're already okay just as you are. And actually, this healing work begins with meeting yourself where you're at. You know, accepting yourself where you are today. Once I accepted myself where I was, even though I was in a place that I didn't wanna be, you know, I didn't weigh what I wanted to weigh, I didn't eat the way I wanted to eat, um, but once I accepted, this is how it is, without judgment, but actually with some compassion and understanding, which means acknowledging why I was turning to the food, which was out of emotional pain, you know, just holding that with some care, it was crazy because it became easier to listen to what my body was saying and actually respond to it. And in time, without counting any calories or measuring anything, Thing or even restricting myself from having sugar or gluten or anything, I naturally saw my weight start to go down to whatever it was supposed to be, you know, for this time of my life. And when that happened, <laughs> interestingly, I didn't care anymore about the number because I realized it wasn't about the weight. I realized this deeply, you know, it was about wanting to feel worthy. And again, I'm not sitting here telling you, I feel worthy all the time, you know, but I have a deep recognition that I'm sure as hell not gonna find my worth in my weight. This is so clear to me now, and it wasn't before, not just an intellectual understanding. You know, so now my energy goes into things that matter to me more deeply, instead of, as Brene Brown says, hustling for my worth in these other ways, which really just distract me from the truth. So I can't explain my whole journey in a video and it wouldn't be the same journey for you anyway because we're very different, but I can share what I focus on now with health because I do prioritize my health, but I don't stress about it anymore. So my efforts look very different now than they did a couple of years ago. So I'm gonna share some specific tips and systems now, but first I do wanna remind you to subscribe and hit the bell so that you can be notified of new videos. I will be posting twice a week all January long. So my first approach and recommendation is to focus more on the good than the bad. So this is sort of mental, but remember, it's mind over munch, right? So focusing on what we can't have, no sugar, no gluten, no dairy, no carbs, whatever it might be, that only reinforces that scarcity mindset and that internal negative self-talk. And even if you do choose to remove anything from your diet for a period, because you know I am actually not an intuitive eating advocate here saying dieting is always bad. I take a very middle way approach that is founded on building inner wisdom first. Dieting is outer wisdom, it's not bad, but we need to be connected to our inner wisdom as a guide for our body. But my point was, even if you do choose to eliminate certain foods, focusing on what you wanna have more of will help your mindset and mental health, which I would argue is the most important thing. Because if this had nothing to do with our minds, then we could all stick to a diet and lose weight and never gain it back because we'd be like robots. But we're not, we're humans. So I focus instead on more. You know, maybe that's enjoying more sweet, delicious fruits that you love, more vegetables and preparing them in ways that you really enjoy, you know, both cooking and eating them. I personally try to get veggies in at least once per day now. That's literally my goal. I used to be really trapped in the black and white thinking, the all or nothing with food. You know, I must get five servings of vegetables in a day or whatever. You know, my mantra now, good enough. Some days 
I do maybe get three or four servings of vegetables a day, but most of the time I get one serving in and that might happen for a full week or longer. Some days I get none, it happens. You know, I aim for good enough. In her book, Daring Greatly, which I highly recommend reading, Brene Brown says, scarcity and abundance are two sides of the same coin. And that abundance is not the opposite of scarcity, but actually the opposite of scarcity is enough. Abundance is shooting really high, I think. You know, I don't need to be enlightened. I just wanna be good enough. You know, isn't that really what any of us want anyway, to just stop feeling not good enough? Okay, so my next system of sorts uh, for prioritizing health is if I want a snack, seeing how hungry I am, and determining if I'm wanting this as fuel or just for joy. And if I am wanting it for joy as a sensory experience, I wanna give myself something I really like and then be present with it. So if that's pretzels or white cheddar Cheetos, which are two of my go-tos, you know, I try to put them in a bowl and sit down and actually notice myself eating them and enjoy the taste and the texture rather than being mindless and eating the entire bag. Now, if my inner wisdom says, no, this is more for fuel. You know, I'm hungry and I need to get something in. I try to turn to something more nutritious first. Maybe it's fruit, you know, and if I really don't wanna eat fruit in that moment, probably I'm either not that hungry or I have some emotional need that's not being met. Okay, so I have a video on food as a coping mechanism that's gonna be coming out later this month, but in that moment, I need to find a coping mechanism to meet my need, which maybe that is food. We'll talk more about that in a few weeks. My next approach to making healthy less stressful is giving myself permission with food. Unconditional permission to keep foods I like in the house. I did a video on fear foods a few years ago. I call that foods with emotional attachment or rules. I used to not keep any of those foods in the house. I thought it was easier, right? Black, white, it's either I'm here and I eat it all, so if it's not here, I won't eat it, easy. The work is done for me. The harder choice though, the harder way of being is getting in touch with why I feel like I need to compulsively eat it if it's there and working with that. So for me, allowing myself to keep the foods in the house was a game changer. Yeah, at first, I did eat more of them, but in time, it became disenchanting. It's like uh, that rebel teenager analogy that I've used before. So when you're a teenager and you're told you can't do something, somehow it's all you wanna do, right? So if you tell yourself you cannot eat a certain food, it becomes all we can think about. But if we're allowed, meh not so enticing, right? Have you ever felt like you want something and even though there's a bunch of crap in the house, none of this is what you want, you want something else? So if you believe, if you actually believe it's allowed, then it's different. So in order for me to be around, for instance, a dozen donuts, which was a huge trigger food for me, and to not eat more than I actually need or want, or to just not eat the full dozen like I used to do 10 years ago, I have to actually believe that I could go out at any minute of any day and get a donut if I really wanted it and allow myself to have it. And how do I learn that? By letting myself actually do it, even if it is January 6th. This is a practice. But just consider for yourself how different your stress level would be if you were able to relate to food in a way that supported you physically and mentally and emotionally. So my last tip or system um, that helps me prioritize health in a stress-free way is mindfulness. So mindfulness is a non-judgmental awareness of the present moment. So I mean mindfulness in a few different ways. One is being mindful with the food, being present with it. You know, binge eating happens when we are mindless. We turn off. We're trying to get away from the present moment, which is really uncomfortable. And we're trying to find some comfort in food. But if I am present with the food, if I'm paying attention to the taste of it and to what's happening in my body, and I develop a relationship with myself, where I learn to trust my body and my mind, then when my body tells me I've had enough, I can be present and actually listen. But if we aren't present, we can't hear the signals from our body. Just like if I'm sitting there having a conversation with you and you're wandering away, you're not paying attention, you can't be present with me, right? We have to be present to pay attention. So I also mean mindfulness as a practice for me, 
that's meditation, which isn't really about lowering anxiety, although it might do that. It's about practicing being present. I talk more about it in my binge eating video and mindfulness video last year, so I will link those below if you want more information. But essentially, if we wanna be more present more often to make more responsive choices rather than compulsive reactions, especially with food, we have to practice being more present in our lives in general. All right, so I hope that this can all be helpful in some way. I know it's not a quick fix, but I don't want you to chase down quick fixes. I wanna help people actually heal and find ease with food and with themselves. I also have a food freedom course, which might be helpful to you. I've linked it below. It includes videos, worksheets, guided exercises to help you approach your own journey to healing. And as a heads up for this month, we have videos coming out Mondays and Thursdays all month long. This will be a mix of food, meal prep, relationship with food, recipes, and more. So I hope that it can inspire you to connect to a healthy lifestyle in a way that feels right to you and that lowers your stress rather than adding to it. I appreciate you being here. I will see you next Monday with a brand new episode. And remember, it's all a matter of mind over munch.